In the last video, we looked at how to factorise quadratic expressions when a equals 1. Now let's try factorise some where a is not 1. OK, so let's try this question here. So we're asked to factorise 2x squared plus 7x plus 6. And notice here that we have 2x squared, so the a value is 2. So it falls into our case here where a is not 1. So what we do to factorise this is, first of all, we do our equal sign, and now we draw two sets of brackets. But we don't write our x in straight away like we did before. The next thing you want to do is look at the final number at the end. So here we have a 6. So we don't worry about whether it's plus or minus 6, we just look at the number, the 6. And now, like before, what we do is we write down the factor pairs of 6. So we write down pairs of numbers that multiply to give us 6. So 1 and 6 is 1. 1 times 6 is 6. Also, 2 and 3. 2 times 3 is 6. And I think that's it. But now what we do is we look at the number in front of the x squared. And here we have a 2. And we also write down the factor pairs of this number, so the numbers that multiply to give us 2. So we have 1 and 2, and that's it. OK, so we have the factor pairs of 2 and the factor pairs of 6 written down. The next thing we do is we take the first factor pair over here, so here we only have 1, we have this 1, 2 pair, and we write the numbers on top of each other below. So we write 1 and 2, so we take this and we write them on top of each other. We now look over here at the factor pairs and we take the first pair here. So we write 1 and 6 on top of each other like so. Then we do a cross and then we follow this cross and we do 1 times 6 and we write the answer here. So 1 times 6 is 6 and 2, follow this, times 1 is 2. Now we look at the number in front of the x. And this time we care about whether it's plus or minus. So we're looking at the plus 7. And now we want to ask, can we make plus 7 by adding and subtracting 2 and 6? So for instance, if we do plus 2, plus 6, is this plus 7? No, it's not. It's plus 8. So that doesn't work. What about minus 2, minus 6? That's minus 8. Again, not OK. How about plus 2, minus 6? That's minus 4, so not what we want. And finally, minus 2 plus 6 is plus 4. And again, that's not what we want. So there are four different combinations to try, and none of those give us plus 7. So that tells us this is not the right combination. So we need to try out another combination. What we do next is we write down this 1, 2 pair again. So we write 1, 2. And now we write the 1 and 6 again, but this time we flip them over. So we write 6 and 1 like this. So essentially what we're trying to do is get all the different combinations we can out of the 1, 2 and these pairs here. So we want to do 1 and 2 and 1 and 6, 1 and 2 and 1 and 6 switched, and then we want to do 1 and 2 and 2 and 3, and then 1 and 2 and 2 and 3 switched. We don't want to swap both the 1 and the 2 and the 1 and the 6 here, because that will give us the same result as here. So we want to keep the 1 and the 2 the same, and just swap the 1 and the 6 over here. Now we do our cross. 2 times 6 is 12, 1 times 1 is 1. Can we add and subtract 12 and 1 from each other to make plus 7? And I think it's kind of clear to see that no, we can't. Like 12 minus 1 is 11, 12 plus 1 is 13, and you can quickly go through all the combinations in your head and see we can't make plus 7 from 12 and 1. So again, not the right combination. Now let's try another one. So we do the 1 and the 2. And now we write this pair here, the 2, 3 here. We do our cross. 1 times 3 is 3. 2 times 2 is 4. Can we make plus 7 from 4 and 3? That's looking good because I think if we do plus 4, plus 3, we will indeed get plus 7. These add up to make plus 7. So this is the pair we want. So if we hadn't got the right combination here, we would have kept going to the final option, which would have been 1 and 2, and then we swap the 2 and 3. But because we've found a combination that adds to give 7, we stop here because this is what we want. Now what we do is we look at the sign here and we transfer it to the middle here. So we have a plus 4, so we've got a plus sign, so we now just write it in the middle here. And we also have plus 3, so we take that plus sign and put it in the middle. Then what we do is we squeeze an x between the first number and the sign. So we put an x here and an x here. 
And now these are the brackets that we want. So the first bracket is the first line here. So that's 1x plus 2. So we can write that in. And the second bracket is 2x plus 3. So we can write that in here. And there we go. That's the factorisation of this here. Note that normally we'd write 1x as just x on its own. So let me do that here. So there we go. We have the factorisation of this is x plus 2 times 2x plus 3. What's really nice about these questions is that you can check that you've got the right answer really easily. So we've put this expression in brackets. So if we expand the brackets on this side, we should get back to the answer here. So let's do this. So if we take our answer, we think that the factorisation of this is this here. So x plus 2 times 2x plus 3. If we expand out the brackets, so we can do a sort of FOIL technique. So we do x times the 2x, that gives us 2x squared. x times the plus 3 here is plus 3x. And then we have plus 2 times 2x is plus 4x. And the plus 2 times the plus 3 is plus 6. And if we combine these terms here and simplify the expression down, we get 2x squared plus 7x plus 6, which is exactly what we started with here. So that's just a good way to check that you do indeed have the correct factorisation. I'd really recommend just quickly expanding out your factorised brackets in an exam to make sure that you've definitely got full marks and you've got the correct factorisation. Let's try another one. So we want to factorise 4x squared plus 8x minus 5. So to do this, first we do the equal sign and our two brackets. Then we want to write down our factor pairs of this number here, the 5. So we have 1 times 5 is 5, and that's it. 5 is prime, so it's just 1 and 5. Now we look at factor pairs of the number in front of the x squared, so that's 4. So we have 4 and 1, and we have 2 and 2. 4 times 1 is 4, and 2 times 2 is 4. And now we want to make our little square grids of all the possible combinations. So let's take the first one here, so we've got 4 and 1, and the first thing here, so we just have 1 and 5, so let's do 1 and 5 like this. Now we do our cross, 4 times 5 is 20, 1 times 1 is 1. Now we want to think, can we add or subtract 1 and 20 in any way to make plus 8? And the answer is no, I don't think so. Plus 1 plus 20 is 21, minus 1 plus 20 is 19, and I think you can see it's not going to work. So we get a sad face for that one. Now we try again, but with 1 and 5 swapped. So we've got 4 and 1, and then we put 5 and 1 the other way around. Let's do our cross. 1 times 5 is 5, 4 times 1 is 4. Can we make plus 8 from 5 and 4? And again, I don't think so. 5 plus 4 is 9, 5 minus 4 is 1. And looking at all four combinations, I think we can say, no, that's not going to work. So we keep going. Let's try another one. Let's try the 2 and 2 one here. So we've got 2 and 2. And let's try the 1 and 5. 1 and 5. We do our cross. 2 times 5 is 10. And 2 times 1 is 2. Now we ask ourselves, can we make plus 8 from 2 and 10? 2 plus 10 is 12, that's no good. But I think if we do minus 2 and plus 10, minus 2 plus 10 gives us plus 8. So that is what we want. So this is the correct combination. Minus 2 plus 10 would give us plus 8. So that's good. So now what we do is we copy the symbol here to the middle. So we've got minus 2, so we put the minus here. Now we've got plus 10, so we take that plus and put it in the middle. Now we just chuck a little x in between the first number and the sign, so we get an x here as well. And these are our two brackets. So we get 2x minus 1 here, and we get 2x plus 5 here. So there we go, that's that expression factorised. And again, if you like, you can expand this out and simplify and check that you get the same answer. It's a great way to check this in an exam. Let's try a final example. So here we have factorise minus 6x squared plus 38x 
minus 12. So this is a little bit different because we have a negative number in front of the x squared. We have a negative a term. The method we've just done only works when a is positive. So to fix this, if you see a negative term in front of the x squared, what you need to do is take out the minus sign. So this equals, you take the minus sign and you do big brackets and you divide everything here by minus one. So here we'll have six x squared minus 38 x plus 12. So you notice that if you multiply this out, so, so this minus in front is like minus one times these terms. So minus one times six x squared gives us minus six x squared minus 1 times minus 38x gives us plus 38x, and minus 1 times plus 12 gives us minus 12. So this is the same thing as this. We've just taken the minus sign out of everything. So if it's easier to see, you just put the minus sign, brackets, and then you flip the signs of all of the terms here. So now we want to use our previous method on the bit inside the bracket. So this equals minus then we're going to do our method on this bit here. So we're going to do our two big brackets like this. So we're now going to do everything the same for this bit in the middle. It's just note that at the end, we're going to have a minus sign outside the brackets. So let's do a section off here. So we're doing our previous method on 6x squared minus 38x plus 12. So we just focus on this bit here for now. Now on this bit here, as before, we take our number at the end, which is here a 12 and we write down the factor pairs of 12. So we have three and four, three times four is 12. We have six and two, six times two is 12. And we have 12 and one, 12 times one is 12. Now we do our factor pairs of six. So six is six times one, and it's also two times three. And I think that's it. So now we want to do our little square grid combinations. So we have six and one and three and four. We do our cross, 1 times 3 is 3, 6 times 4 is 24. Now we're looking at the number in front of the x, so we've got the minus 38, and we include the negative sign here, so minus 38. Can we make minus 38 from 3 and 24? And no, I don't think so. The smallest number we can make from 3 and 24 is minus 3, minus 24, and that just gets us to minus 27. So we're not even close, we can't get minus 38. Now we try the same 6 and 1, but we swap over the 3 and the 4. 6 times 3 is 18, 1 times 4 is 4. Can we make minus 38 from 4 and 18? And no, we can't. The smallest number is minus 22, and again, we're not close. Okay, so we're trying to get through all the combinations here. So now let's keep the 6 and 1, but move on to the next one here. So we've got 6 and 1, and 6 and 2. We do our cross, 1 times 6 is 6, 6 times 2 is 12. Can we make minus 38 from 6 and 12? And again, the answer is no, unfortunately. The next one we want to do is 6 and 1, and then we want to flip over the 6 and 2. In the interest of saving space, let me just rub this one out. We're now going to do the 2 and 6. We've flipped it over. So this time we get 6 times 6 is 36, 1 times 2 is 2. Can we make minus 38 from 2 and 36? This is looking good, because if we do minus 2 and minus 36, we do indeed get minus 38. So this is the combination we want. As we've found the right combination, we can stop going through the other combinations now, because we've found the one we want. But if this was again a sad face, if again we like didn't have what we wanted here, we'd have to keep going through all the options. We'd have to do 6 and 1 and 12 and 1, 6 and 1, and then swap the 12 and 1 over. And if still we hadn't found one, We'd have to then move on to this 2 and 3 combination and do everything again with 2 and 3. So do 2 and 3 with 3 and 4, 2 and 3 with 3 and 4 swapped, 2 and 3 with 6 and 2, 2 and 3 with 6 and 2 swapped, 2 and 3 with 12 and 1, 2 and 3 with 12 and 1 swapped. So it can take a bit of time, but as you get a bit more familiar with how these work, you can often skip out some cases in your head because you can just see they're not going to work. And sometimes you're lucky and you get it on the first couple of goes anyway. But anyway, we found the combination we wanted after four attempts. So... We've got six and one and two and six, and these work. So what we do is we copy that sign into the middle. So we've got a minus here, so the minus goes here. Minus here, so we put a minus in the middle. And then we then squeeze an x between the first number and the sign. And then these are what goes in our brackets. So we write six x minus two in the first one. And one x minus six in the other one. 
and again 1x is normally written as just x so let's just write x here x minus 6 so that was this factorized so this term here the 6x squared minus 38x plus 12 factorized into these two brackets so minus that term which is what we wanted factorizes into minus and then these two brackets together so this is a correct factorization of this with the minus sign outside if however you don't like the minus sign being outside the brackets you can incorporate that minus sign into one of them so remember this is sort of just saying minus one times this so you can multiply this minus one into one of the brackets so if we put it into the first one this is the same as doing minus one times six x so that gives us minus 6x and minus 1 times minus 2, which is plus 2. And you just incorporate it into one of the brackets. So this is also the same as that. But this is still correct with the minus sign outside. This still counts as a factorization of this. But it's just if you want to make it neater and move the, the minus sign inside one of the brackets, you can multiply it into one of the brackets, just one, not both. And you get another expression that's also the same and is also a factorization. So both of these answers work. So just remember, if you see a minus sign in front of the x squared, take it outside first and do big brackets and flip the signs of everything inside the bracket. So you get minus an expression. And this expression in here has got a positive number in front of the x squared. And then we can use our usual method like this and doing our grid squares to factorise that section and then you times it by the minus sign at the end to get back to what you wanted. So there you go, you can now factorise quadratic expressions both in the cases where a is 1 and where a is not 1. Thanks for watching, here's another video I think you'll like, here's another video YouTube thinks you'll like. I have no idea what it is, maybe it's good, maybe it's not, who knows? If you like this video and want to see more aesthetic massy videos do check out my channel and subscribe!